For centuries, pirates have been romanticized in literature, movies, and folklore. Their reputation as rebels who live by their own set of rules has made them symbols of freedom and defiance. Yet, beneath the romanticized exterior lies a complex web of fact and fiction where the truth is often obscured by myths and legends. In this video, we'll be journeying through history and fiction, dispelling myths and uncovering the truths that lies beneath the surface of this enduring fascination with pirates and their enigmatic codes. Pirate codes have been a central plot device in popular culture, none more iconic than in the Pirates of the Caribbean film franchise. These movies have contributed significantly to the enduring fascination with pirates and their code. The films have charmed audiences with their blend of historical facts and fantastical elements. At the heart of the franchise was the Pirate Code, a set of guidelines that governed the behavior of pirates. The code was depicted as a mixture of honor, tradition, and governance, and added depth and intrigue to the characters in their world. One of the most iconic scenes involving the Pirate Code occurred in Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Captain Teague, the keeper of the code, had the physical copy brought out and opened during a meeting of the Pirate Lords, emphasizing its importance in maintaining order and discipline among the pirates. The code in the films not only served as a plot device, but also as a symbol of the pirate way of life. While Pirates of the Caribbean may suggest that pirate codes were universal and sacred, historical reality paints a more nuanced picture. Pirate codes did exist, but they were not standardized documents governing all pirates. Instead, they varied among individual crews. To truly understand the significance of pirate codes, we must journey back to the 17th and 18th century, known as the Golden Age of Piracy. This era was marked by a surge in piracy, primarily in the Caribbean and Atlantic Ocean. The Golden Age of Piracy was characterized by the decline of traditional empires and the rise of colonial powers. European nations were locked in a constant struggle for supremacy, which created a volatile environment in the high seas. Pirates exploited this turmoil to their advantage, launching daring raids on merchant vessels and coastal towns. These pirates hailed from various backgrounds, including former sailors, privateers, and even slaves seeking freedom. Some were drawn to piracy due to harsh working conditions aboard legitimate ships, while others saw it as their way to escape poverty or oppression. Regardless of their motivations, these pirates operated outside the confines of traditional society, forging a unique subculture. Central to this were the pirate articles, what we refer to as the pirate code. These documents were a unique set of rules and regulations that governed the behavior of pirates within a crew. While pirate codes were not universal or standardized, they did share common elements that reflected the pirate way of life. Pirate articles served several essential purposes. Firstly, they established a framework for maintaining order among the crew. Life aboard a pirate ship was challenging, with constant dangers and meager living conditions. Rules were needed to ensure crew members cooperated effectively and disputes were resolved swiftly. Secondly, pirate articles addressed issues of distribution of loot and compensation for injuries sustained during raids. Fair division of plunder was crucial for keeping crew morale high and preventing mutinies. These codes also outline penalties for theft, drunkenness, or insubordination, underscoring the importance of discipline within the pirate community. To gain a deeper understanding of pirate codes and how they function in practice, we can examine historical pirate articles that have survived through time. These documents shed light on common rules, regulations, and agreements among pirate crews during the Golden Age of Piracy. One of the earliest recorded sets of pirate articles was attributed to the buccaneer Bartholomew Portuguese in the early 1660s. However, the first documented pirate articles belonged to George Cusack, who was active from 1668 to 1675. These early pirate articles drew inspiration from earlier maritime law and privateer codes. Buccaneers operated under a set of ship's articles that governed various aspects of crew conduct, reflecting the pirate way of life. They were known by various names, including Charter Party, Custom of the Coast, or Jamaica Discipline. These agreements eventually came to be known as the Pirate Code. It's important to note that pirate articles varied from one captain to another, and sometimes even from one voyage to the next. However, they generally included provisions for maintaining discipline, specifying each crew member's share of treasure, and providing compensation for injuries sustained during raids. Pirate articles served as a cornerstone of pirate crews, and each crew member was expected to sign or make their mark on these articles. This formal act of agreement 
was followed by an oath of allegiance or honor, often taken on a Bible, though sometimes on different symbols like cross pistols, swords, cannons, or even a human skull. Once signed, these articles were prominently displayed within the pirate ship, often posted on the door to the captain's cabin. New recruits, often coming from captured ships, were also made to sign the articles, either voluntarily or under duress, sometimes even pretending to be forced to do so. This strategic decision allowed them to claim they were forced into piracy if they were caught, increasing their chances of acquittal. Pirate articles were closely related to the ship's articles of privateers. Both types of articles governed discipline and the distribution of earnings, although pirate articles typically emphasized a more equitable division of plunder. The roots of these codes could be traced back to Europe in the Middle Ages, when merchants, ship owners, and seamen entered into joint agreements to share profits. While few original pirate articles have survived, we have access to nine complete or nearly complete sets of piratical articles. These documents provide insights into the governing principles of pirate crews. It's worth noting that most pirate crews would destroy their articles if they were about to be captured to prevent them from being used against them in legal proceedings. Contrary to the democratic ideal that pirates are often associated with, the historical evidence from pirate articles paints a more nuanced picture. While pirate codes did establish certain principles of equality and shared decision-making, they were not a declaration of full-fledged democracy. Pirate articles such as those attributed to Bartholomew Roberts and John Phillips did grant each crew member the right to vote in affairs of moment and share in provisions and seize goods equally. This suggests the level of participation in decision-making and wealth distribution. However, the articles also contain provisions for punishment and authority which the captain and officers could enforce. For example, breaches of the code could result in marooning, flogging, or even death. Punishments typically decided by the captain and approved by majority vote. Pirate codes covered a wide range of issues related to shipboard life and conduct. They were not just about division of loot and shared provisions, but also addressed various aspects of pirates' daily existence. Examining specific articles from historical pirate codes sheds light on the realities of pirate life. Pirate articles regulated discipline among the crew, often with severe consequences for transgressions. For instance, if a pirate were found guilty of cowardice in battle, the captain and majority of the crew would determine their punishment. This could involve marooning, a brutal practice where the offender was abandoned on a remote island with minimal supplies, often resulting in a grim fate. While pirate articles emphasized an equitable distribution of wealth, they also recognized that circumstances might require adjustments. If resources became scarce, pirates had the authority to vote for a reduction in shares, demonstrating a pragmatic approach to resource management. Pirate codes also dictated various aspects of life on board. They enforced rules against gambling, restricted drinking hours, and prohibited disorderly conduct below deck, emphasizing the importance of maintaining order during their criminal enterprises. Pirate articles mostly prohibited women from being among the crew. Those who attempted to bring women on board face the penalty of death. This regulation aimed to prevent disruption and conflict caused by romantic entanglements. If you found this video interesting, please like, comment, and subscribe for more captivating pirate history content. A special thank you goes out to my Patreon top tier supporters, Patrick Chamberlain and 1660. All Patreon supporters get to watch these episodes early and without ads, and the lowest tier costs just $3 per month. If you're inspired to contribute, You'll find links to Patreon and PayPal below. And for those who crave even more information about the golden age of piracy, don't forget to pre-order my upcoming book, Untamed Waters, on Amazon. The link is down below in the description.